And welcome back, folks. Welcome back. It has been, um, it's been a hot minute since I've recorded last. And it's been, let's see, we missed out on Christmas. We missed out on New Year's. Happy New Year's, by the way, to everybody. Uh, actually, there should have been two videos that had been scheduled to upload. Uh, one on Christmas and one on New Year's. Guess what didn't happen? Not that they weren't done. Uh, there were actually two problems. One, the first problem is that... Uh, they were both so horribly foobarred that they, they just, I, it's a good thing they didn't upload. I had tried to schedule it so that the uploads would actually go on to YouTube, trying out a method to see if I could do it without having to worry about um, me, myself, actually having to upload it while I was away. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, but fortunately enough, after I went home and actually got a chance to view the files after I stopped fuming over it and just spewing out curse words, um... I, I watched the videos themselves and they were glitchy, the sound was off, there was actually a lot of just weird crap artifacts off, I, I, it was just, I don't know what happened with it. It was one long recording session that I did just to show a couple of things and it did not work out well. I don't know why, but whatever. So we've lost a little bit of footage since our last run. I'm going to try and recover a little bit of it and I may put it at the beginning of this video. So if you're coming from the battle before this into this this is the explanation as to what the hell you just watched anyways continuing on we are up the side of the mountain and we are nearly done with this fight as a matter of fact we are so close to being done it's not even funny uh as you can tell we've actually up uh, leveled up a little bit here 21s all the way around uh, matter of fact uh resner there is not too far from 22 uh 21 is a pretty decent level 22 i think is the really safe level this boss that's coming up is a pain in the ass this is where the game does get kind of difficult, and the, it, it really does separate a lot of players. And they put the controller down and go walk away from it. Um, as you can see, I've actually decked out some new equipment over here. I went back to town and picked up some new things. Uh, just a couple of small little things there to make sure that uh, Gavin here has all he needs. And you'll see that the story battle here is missing. If you see footage beforehand of that battle that I managed to recover, then that's actually the battle itself. If not... The explanation is, in one of the videos, we actually take on that battle and, well, you know, uh, wrecked them pretty good. But, unfortunately, it did not carry through in all likelihood, so I'm not going to be too hard-pressed if it doesn't. Uh, let's see, what other things did you miss? Well, thank you for shorting him out. <clears throat> Please kill him, Aeon. Oh, I forgot he has shot guard. God damn it. Okay, of course. So anyways, uh, after defeating... I don't know why I decided that was a brilliant plan, but I did. Let's just use boost attack on him and be done with it. You fight beam cannon him. Anyways, of course. After be defeating uh, the last story mission, which was against the Kamphir and two other Mook mobile suits, it wasn't too bad. If you take out the Kamphir mobile suit first, you'll do a lot better than you would have otherwise. Uh, another big problem to run into with them is that they like to, I think, status affect you a lot. So you can easily get shocked into oblivion, I think. I'm trying to remember, that was so long ago that I actually fought them. Um, let's see what else here. I did go on to actually fight the boss to hilarious effect uh, because I forgot to switch the weapons on two of the characters. So they are armed with nothing but beam weaponry and that does not work against this boss. So if I do recover up to that, I hope I do because it was hilarious to actually listen to me die. Came back through, beat the whole boss and everything was great. And then, yeah, none of that footage is probably going to survive with my luck. Alright, I need to, since I'm not willing to waste, where is my... There it is. There it is. I had so much money from leveling up that I just went back and upgraded a bunch of the mobile suits and crap. So hopefully we don't actually have to fight anything else. Let's get on to this battle. I'm tired of being on this freaking mountain. It's snowing outside right now. It's freaking cold. I don't want to be playing a video game. This is not a comfortable simulation here. Try not to fall off. God forbid you make me happy. You know, I don't know why he would be on the top of a mountain. That seems like the worst spot to have your, your final guy. Because, I mean, where are you going to go off the top of the mountain if you're surrounded? This is true. They are tricksy. Epic foreshadowing. Yeah, this kind of came out of left field a lot of, 
of the times I felt when Tremmy displays certain little tacks of emotion. And a lot of this gets explained later on, but right now it just kind of seems really weird for her character to me. And Gavin exactly, you know, hasn't exactly proven himself to be, you know, the guy who jumps in front of the train even though he, he can't stop it. I, he doesn't really do that a whole lot. Although he did try to save that whole town, I suppose, by himself. <sighs> Again, you mentioned, you know, Lucy and anyone else. She mentions her brother briefly, her family, that kind of thing. But uh, she never really goes into it. She just kind of alludes to the whole thing. Besides, I thought it would be uh, her and Sky Pirate there that would be hooking up instead, but I guess she kind of has it for everybody. Or maybe she just carries a lot. That's true. All right, let's go up to the side of the mountain and get this done. I hated this boss. I hated it with such a passion on dying. Actually, we're we're in pretty good shape. God, really? Really going to get a battle right freaking there. There's literally a load zone. Maybe 30, maybe 30 feet from me. And, of course, it's a barrier dom. My freaking favorite. Also, uh, I have a shotgun here that you get should get from the campfire store battle beforehand. It's actually a pretty decent little weapon. Uh, he is a melee motherfucker, so we're just going to blow him up outright. Along with a double cannon on top there for Gavin, just to give him a little bit more... Oh, nice. Give him a little bit more firepower, because I want to start using some of the attacks like Gatling Body, Gatling Fire, that kind of thing. Those come in handy, especially with this next boss. God, fucking I hate short. Uh, he hates status effects. Nice shot there, by the way. Uh, another little thing is that it actually brings physical defense down when it actually hits. So that's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, you just sit there, Hal. Goodbye. And... Oh! Glory. I can just kill him. What sucks is I can't actually get rid of one of the guys who was shot. Can we please, please end this fight? I'm tired of sitting here. Thank you. You know what? The more I look at Gavin's mobile suit, just with the parts and everything in the color, I really like this design. It, it's grown on me quite a bit. Especially now that it has the cannons, and it just looks really cool looking. All right, now I get to go re freaking do all my health again. And I want to be at full health, and I don't want to waste TP points for it. Oops, and I need to switch out. I almost forgot to do that. That was another thing I would screwed up, too, with that first initial fight when I got wrecked, was um, I didn't have the party members in the front row when I first started the fight, and it caused me a little bit of confusion at first. All right, let's just get into this. Load zone, please. Thank you. Could it be a snowflake? Now, to be fair, how they don't see this coming, I'll never know. First off, the color is completely contrasting to the back. Well, you'll see. Now, that's a better reaction. What in the world? I actually really like the design for this thing. Fee, fi, fo, vum. I smell the blood of the Gap children. Oh, Sumo Rasala. You are a big one. How this thing does, doesn't cause an avalanche, just trumping and stumping around like a gigantic Inkiak is, is beyond me. That one menacing eye. Although it is not our good friend Dozel who's piloting. Uh, Burly Man. Good explanation for that name there. Uh, dear sir, excuse me, I don't mean to alarm you, but there is a wolf attempting to eat your head. What you see here, folks, is basically the fusion dance combination of Dozel Zabi and Shin Matsunaga. That's exactly what he is. Yes, the friends, uh, come on, they're a, bit, a bunch of dicks, to be honest. Yes, yes, we all pay. Thank God you are the last general. You know, everybody has friends on both sides of conflict. That type of mentality has its uses, I suppose. Enough talk! Let's fight! That... Okay. I suppose history does, you know, 
the victor does make the history of it all. Tristan, watch out! He's piloting a big jam! That's a serious combat machine! And once it's mass-produced, blah blah blah, beam-proof field. I field, I see you see. Exactly. Alright, so this little explanation is kind of nice, because if you didn't know, you could waste quite a few shots off the bat. Alright, so he's got a couple of attacks that are very hard hitting, but for the majority of the time, we want to be concerned with his boost attacks. His boost attacks are what will wreck us. And actually, surprisingly enough, Gavin here is going to save the day because of that. Most of his attacks are also beam based, which means we can use our beam field to negate that. So he's going to be on charging duty for a majority of this fight. Pretty well all of it, actually. Alright, we're going to start by getting a speed up going for everybody, and then you are going to... Oh, um, let's do a defense hack. Let's start adding status effects to him. Yeah, giant mega particle cannon. That's fine. It only hits one target, but it hits a lot. So you got to be careful with that. All right, here comes a technique. That's not bad. We're going to have Gavin charge once more. And you don't really have anything to... Nah, it's not really worth doing that. Trying to decide who I want to bring in here. Really? I think I'm actually just going to have her charge. That, that sounds like a good plan. And then you are going to heal yourself. You definitely need it. Because right now he shouldn't be attacking us. This is just going to be probably something to bring a stat down. Something like that. This is not the part where we... So he's going to power himself up. That's fine. That's fine. We'll take care of that here in a moment. Alright, so now we've got our first boost attack. I guarantee it's almost always going to be a beam-based attack for the first round of this stuff. So make sure you got Gavin up. Because I have that additional energy tank onto him, he starts off with more energy. And I also have an Ian Charger pack on him, which means charge gives another additional energy point per boot, or, yeah, per charge. But beam field here is going to make him into a joke. So we're going to use that. That's going to take care of a lot of our problems. When do we get... Uh, we want to get up to the point where I can use Gatling Fire. So we need nine points in order to do that. We're going to charge again. And you are actually going to bring his offensive power down because we do not want him having a higher attack power. Even though... Even though he can only use that mo or single target every once in a while it comes to be a pain in the ass later on so beam cannon times 28 is his base boost attack you'll use this one most of all throughout the entire fight but it hits everybody however if you're using the eye field or uh, the beam field it completely negates it so basically it's a waste of his time but here comes the real kicker for why he's such a bastard notice he's going straight into another boost attack this is another freaking 28 shot beam fire. It's annoying. But luckily Gavin here has enough to actually pull this off. Tremmy, we're actually going to use you to boost. We're going to have him Gatling, go ahead and Gatling fire. She still has the Gundam beam rifle on there, which should be negated, but I don't know if it actually gets factored into the hit for this. Because with Gatling fire, it fires all of your weapons times four on them. It does a lot of damage, which is one reason why it's so good. Uh, boost, what do you have? You also have Gatling fire, surprisingly enough. You know, I could wait. I could wait and bring her back in. Although Reznor is, I think, ready for hers. We're going to be switching on a lot of people very quickly in order to make use of their uh, boost attacks when they're up in charge from the back row. Good. Hypercharge is what I want. Because beam field here, thanks to speed up and the fact that Gavin has a huge speed boost, because I did up the uh, gem sniper's capabilities to max off screen. Gatling fire. 648. He has a lot of health. If I haven't mentioned that yet, he has a tremendous amount of health. I think it's probably close to 7,000 points of health. A lot. And there's a little tricky point he gets to. When you get around 3,000 damage or so, he's going to have a little tricksy point where he likes to be a dick. So I'll point that out. Well, you'll notice it. Alright, that's 1,000. Just keep it in rough figures. Now he's got another boost coming in. Thankfully, thankfully, this isn't actually um, a beam attack. However, it does hit everybody, so... I recommend defending immediately after this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Everybody should have a chance to get defend off Earthquake. So he goes trumping and stomping around the mountain. 
giant clawed stopping feet. There, right there. How does that not cause half the mountain to break off? I know it's a game. I know I'm bitching, but whatever. I mean, I hate this fight. It pisses me off. So here comes his ranged attack. That's fine. I don't care about that. So we're just going to go ahead and have Gavin charge because we need him at full strength as quick as possible. We go bring you there, and you are going to get switched out for, surprisingly enough, our new healing bitch in this fight. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm... No, oh, I don't want to. You don't have enough attack yet. I want Hal. All right, Hal, there you are. Hal's almost at complete max. You're going to boost into him with a Mega Slash. As a matter of fact, we almost might get two of these off. Okay. Okay, so there's 1,500, we'll say roughly. I know it's a little more. Beam gun hits one person. Tremi, that's fine. All right, so Gavin is in good shape here. I, you could try and use Gatling Fire if you really wanted to. If you're feeling froggy. If not, I wouldn't recommend it. Playing it safe would be keeping Gavin just doing his thing by himself with no problems. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if I'd have him use Knuckle at this point. You might be better off just switching him out for... Oh gosh, you could probably switch him out for Aeon. So Aeon, who doesn't have Gatling Fire yet, that's a pain in the ass. That is a pain in the ass, but we will use... Could use a rail gun. that'll hit him. Beam Cannon won't, because it's a beam weapon. I don't want to use that. Uh, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll charge. You're going to... I think you can use your boost for that. Nope, not quite. You're going to charge again, and Hal can actually use it. Oh, I thought he could. It's six points. I was completely wrong. Uh, let's try the boost attack. If Hal gets hit, that's fine. We just don't want to make sure make sure he doesn't die. Uh, 1,700 or so. As long as it doesn't hit Trim, I think we should be okay. Okay, that's fine. Perfectly fine. All right, here comes our technique points where it's going to be a pain in the ass for us. We're also going to want to switch out some people here real soon. Gatling fire, that works for me. Two Gatling fires would work fantastic. And you are going to get switched out. You're going to get Tristan in here. Tristan, I want you to use... Tristan actually learned Repair All. I don't remember if that was on screen or not. But to cost 16, but it restores a medium amount to all allies on the current battlefield. Nice little ability to have. And we have, you know, it, it costs a lot, and he doesn't have a whole lot of technique points, but for this fight, we won't ever get close to using them. Here comes our Gatling Fire. I didn't see how much that was, so we're going to guess about 500. Defense Jammer brings everyone's defense down. Not good, but not the end of the world. Okay, so we're probably about 2,500 or so, roughly. And here comes our first series of boost attacks. That's fine. That's just prime. What we do want to do is actually switch out for Gavin. Gavin, because he's got full boost now. And we're not into the tough part yet. So we're going to have... I did that by accident one time, too. I remember hitting Gatling Fire bags instead of Beam Field. I didn't catch it in time. It was, ugh, it was not good. Um... Let's go ahead and use a power up on Tristan, and Tristan is just going to use power charge. It does ignore the target's armor, but it's the best we've got. Alright, that'll negate that whole problem. Good, she managed to get that off first. This will probably kick him over 3,000. Yep, right over 3,000. Beam cannon times 28, that's fine. He's got a couple of other little boost attacks he likes to use. Although, until we trigger it, it won't start. Alright, complete guard. Ah, there it is. Okay, so we, yeah, we got him over 3,000. When you get to this point, over 3,000 or so health, he starts flipping his shit like a little kid. No more playing around. Switch into maximum overload. Alright, so he's going to use a technique here. It's going to give him a full charge. I've done this fight three times almost in a row. <laughs> so I kind of know this pretty good. I really wish I had the footage for that. We want Gavin at full charge. There's just no way around that. Uh, we want to switch you out for Resner. 
who has enough for her lightning charge. Okay, we're going to use boost and hyper charge, not lightning charge, and you are going to also use power charge again. This should be enough to get him up to 4,000. Okay, 3,500. And I am rounding these figures off. Full charge gives him a lot of firepower. It's no joke, folks. There's 4,000. So we're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Here comes our first boost that we have to worry about from him. Beanfield should take care of it. Although he's going to be a little tricky now. He's going to switch a little couple of these things up. So keep that in mind. What do you know for techniques? That's good. You know power up. That's kind of useless for me right now. You know high repair. But, uh... Ah, oh boy. I kind of want to get Tremmy back in here because she's got a lot of health. If we get... Yeah. Ooh, no, not charge. Thankfully, you can cancel out those. Tremmy has a lot of health, nearly 1,000, which makes her an ideal candidate to tank shit. I'm going to charge because I want to get a full charge off. And you are going to... Can't use a power charge. If he just charge with you... Yeah, let's do that. But we won't need to heal just yet. I think it's called Mega Flare. Gigantic flame, mega flame. I was close enough. This is a beam attack, despite the fact that it doesn't kind of look at it, look that way some ways. So beam field will completely negate it, but it only hits one person. Keep that in mind. So you just went after Tristan. All right, so he's gonna go immediately into another boost attack, and I'm pretty sure this should be a 28. It can either be a 28 beam cannon salute, essentially, or he'll go into earthquake. I think it's a beam cannon though. If not, we can heal through it. I'm not too worried. So let's go ahead and boost with a beam field, just in case. You're going to charge, and we're going to have you heal. It's a waste for a little bit, but I want everyone as close to full health as possible. Let's see if I get a good pattern out of him. <laughs> if you think these fights are technical, man, when you get to some of the secret fights at the end of the game, it's just, yeah, okay, so it is a beam cannon times 28. That's fine. By the way, how does he not kill all of his allies behind him? This sucker shoots behind him. This is not a weapon you use while in the midst of your own troops. Okay, so now he's going to be fully pissed and all that. So we're going to want to defend because this should be an earthquake coming up. And if it's not, I don't have enough points for Gavin to actually get this going with another eye field. Gigantic burst, okay. That's going to hit everybody. This is his last little technique that has a lot of fun. hit for everyone. This is a beam attack. It can be blocked. Okay, it does a lot of damage. A lot of damage. That's fine. I have Gavin charge because he has to be at full health, or has to be at full charge for everything. You know, boost for the Gatling fire. And you are going to use repair all to start bringing people back to full health again. Once we get him above 5,000 damage inflicted, it, this little fight will end pretty quick. So there's 4,400. Uh, just say 500 after rounding. Full charge. Here we go again. And he keeps doing this too. So if you don't have a way to block this, there's almost no way to get your health back in time. You spend most of your time freaking healing. So it's a pain in the ass. So Beamfield again. Uh, Tremmy, you need to get out of there because people in the back row have the ability to use stuff yet. We're going to be using Hal. Because Aeon's not quite ready and Resner's got a little ways to go too. Boost, we're going to use a double attack, or a Mega Slash double attack. And you are going to start using Power Charge as well. This should kick him over 5,000, maybe about 5,500. And by that point, Aeon and Resner should be ready to go too. Okay, 5,000, 5,500, Gigantic Flame, technically a beam attack, it is completely negated. Ugh. God, I'm so sick and tired of this fight. Yay, you did absolutely nothing. Alright, and Gavin has plenty of time to use beam field again. Now let's go ahead and get uh, Tremmy, or, or uh, Hal out of there for Aeon, who can use a f Gatling body, or full Gatling, I can't remember the name of it. Gatling fire, that's the one. 
you can also use another power charge, which means we should be able to finish this off with Resner. We're at, what, 5,500? This should kick him up to 6,500 in total damage inflicted. 6,000. Gigantic Burst. Useless. He is really scary if, you've, you know, if you don't fight him the right way. If you don't play with his gimmick and try and get around it, it will definitely just destroy you. But in a way, we've seen this kind of fight before back with the Zama, way back in the desert. Okay. Oh, fuck, he's dead. Damn, that was a lot quicker than I thought. Bye-bye. London Bridge has fallen down. And that's it. That's the big Zam fight. I remember a lot of people used to have trouble with this. It gave me a shit ton of trouble as a kid. It, uh, when I went into it unprepared, not thinking, you know, I, it wrecked me. Uh, definitely make sure you've got your proper weapons. Beam weapons in their normal attacks, just using the, a beam rifle, for example, I don't think that works. However, when you use it as Gatling fire or Gatling body, I don't know if it still classifies them as ammo types, like beam versus solid shell, so I don't know about that. Somebody else will probably have to explain that. But that's the way I usually go about it. It works for Tremi, it worked for Aeon, and if I had used it with Gavin, it would have worked with him. But he didn't, he didn't have any beam weaponry, as a matter of fact. Uh, but Gavin is definitely relegated to just using beam fields. So Reznor learns Gatling Fire. It's useless. She's not a main party character at the moment. And I don't really have a whole lot of stuff here. 7,500 experience. 3,000 credits. We're doing fucking fantastic. Big Zam is dead. Fuck you, Big Zam. And then a horse you rode in on. Yes, this can be, actually. Well, it probably wasn't him. We'd have no there would have been nothing left of the orphanage. You notice how no one seems to want to own up to that? Oh boy. Okay. Here comes it just you'll see. Yeah, there's no way you could be Lord Zarf. No way. But did you know Tristan is Lord Zarf? What a twist! Bazuli. Yeah, we got that. What did we get wrong? That's not true. That's impossible. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, a lot of people pointed this out. A lot of people saw this coming. It's not that big of a joke. As a matter of fact, it's kind of facepalm that it took them this long. You, what are you doing with them? I have no more need for the Dark Alliance. Oh, what do you know? Oh, well, just what you said. How? Oh, he's actually Vladi's Earth. Okay, so here comes like the, one of the, the dumbest looking reveals ever. He actually seems a little remorseful about this. I will admit that. Oh, but I can. Flips the switch, and personality is different now. Here we go. How far down the rabbit hole would you like to go to By the way, I love the battle damage that the big Zom's carcass has. That's a really nice attention to detail. I like that. Okay, look at this. D is that a horn on the middle of your forehead? Come on, guy. He looks really weird without the mask. And here comes our other thing. I thought my brother died years ago. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're telling me this entire time your brother was Vladi Zarf. You've spent how much time with us? And every cutscene, we constantly you know, mention Vladi Zarf and the Dark Alliance. And you don't think you want to mention that to us in the least? Oh, God. Yes, do tell it all. Here, uh, today on Murray. I don't, he looks too weird. His eyes are really far apart. I mean, sure, I'm, I'm supposed somebody could actually look like that, but it just looks weird on this character design. And whatever his horn bead thing is, I'm not sure if they were trying to go for a certain look to it or what, but whatever, anyways. Ah, uh, yes, the Zarth family who plunged the entire freaking world into chaos. There's a good legacy. Yep, 
Yep, yep. To be fair, I gotta give him this. He sticks to his guns once he starts. I miss Hal already. Oh, Tristan, this is just the beginning, my friend. Now, he doesn't really reveal why he wants that right now, so it always puzzled me. Ah, uh, yes, we're going to stop you. To be fair, he's in a Gelgoog special that I have really been neglecting. I haven't leveled that sucker up at all because you can't do much with it, and I hate not being able to tune a mobile suit. <clears throat> Interesting choice of words for him that he regrets that he can't let uh, Tristan take revenge. It almost seems like he feels remorseful for it. Again, almost like a man who, who knows he needs to do these things for the greater good, but still feels remorse for his actions. So there's something to that character. Yeah, no, he's that. Or one mind, or single-minded. Yeah, we're kind of outgunned here. You'll see why. I'm going to be introducing a lot of people. Oh, well, fuck me. Oh, hi. I guess you're from the reach around. Okay, no, that's just unfair. So now we've got Shenlong Custom, Death Scythe Custom. Oh, my God. Really? Really? You had to bring in Psycho Gundam for this? <sighs> Overkill much? Seriously, how did nobody see that thing approaching the friggin' mountain? Uh, yes, the Master Gundam. Yeah, they are, really. The Ark Alliance is pathetic. Yes, he has a lot of backup. As a matter of fact, one of them is more than enough to take out our entire team right now. I didn't say I was giving up there, Reznor. Oh, don't do this shit, Reznor. Or, I mean, Miss Matilda, because that's who you're fucking reminding me of right now. How about we all escape? Because <clears throat> there's no way in hell one mobile suit could keep all fucking four, five, five of them busy. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure the carcass of Big Zion is going to explode any moment now. It is kind of half melted. Yeah, well, Sosai probably doesn't trust most people to begin with. Yeah, sacrificing yourself really doesn't help a whole lot. Again! Run! Run the fuck away! You have no chance. Throwing your life away even to buy a couple of seconds wouldn't really matter much. Any of those mobile suits could easily kill off people. Gavin actually has a good idea for a change. This is true, I suppose. Uh, Gavin acting rather grown up. Although I'm surprised he's as able to cope with Reznor's decision. Reznor, you are one brave lady, I'll give you that. Unfortunately, we don't get to see anything for like a battle for that point right there. Listen, dude, she's already made her mind up, and by the time you actually get done with this speech bubble, she's probably be dead in all actuality, unless she's one hell of a pilot. It's a tough decision, but Gavin's probably right about it. Besides, she's already done it. Now, there shouldn't be any random battles here, so you should be able to just run to your heart's content. This is also kind of a different area. It's like the opposite side of the mountain. Go in here. <sighs> of course, of all things they send to fight or come and get us, it's the freaking Psycho Gundam. I gotta admit, the giant mobile armors in this game are just really well done, even in their semi-chibi form. Wait a minute. I smell a rat. No, I'm surprised she didn't flip her shit when seeing Master Gun again. Yes, Gavin isn't with us. Why? Hey, Trimmy knows. Yes, he did. That's some One Piece style thinking, but all right, we'll take it. We can brute force our way through this, surely. So they walk back. Oh no, the door's shut. You know, 
despite me taking the mick out of these two characters, Reznor and Gavin, for, for just going through here and, and basically suiciding themselves, there's something about fighting a battle that you have no hopes of winning, and you know this. There's just something where you can go all out, where there's no reason to hold back. It does... It's interesting for it. I don't know, maybe it's the Dynasty Warriors player in me, but there's something of fighting a in countable or in air countable bleh, fighting vast odds that's you know numerically superior and all that or skills in this case you know if we all kept ran, running instead of actually talking we'd be fine really stop talking talking talk while running how about that we'll make a compromise yeah I, that's why i found that a little odd when that scene right before the boss battle come up uh, came up it felt too forced you know, I felt like they needed to actually have that thrown out a little bit a couple of times for Tremie and Gavin. Well, he's already gone and locked the door, and, you know, the Cycle Gundam's not going to hover there waiting patiently forever. I really like the design I, that we've come up with here. For the dark green color with the, the lighter green limbs and everything, it just looks really good. Put that in Build Fighters, I'd fucking watch it. Oh, we're going to stop him. Don't you worry about that. Go to North America. Find the Unicorn Headquarters. Of course he's in North America. Now go. Flee, flee for your lives. All right, well, Gavin's dead. There's nothing much you can do about it now, Trimmy. Exactly, it's not. But that doesn't make it your fault. Despite the fact that he may be a, a blood relative of yours, his actions are his own, not not yours. Exactly. Gavin's actually looking at this very well. Most most people in an anime story like this, or for a game story, would freak out. Oh, you're his brother. You're evil off the bat. That kind of thing. Nah, not this time. Shit happens, especially in real life. Although this is a game. Tragedy, or what should be a blessed moment is mixed in with tragedy. It happens all too often in our actual real world. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I kind of disagree a little bit with that. If you die, that's it. Game over, fuckhead. You didn't win. There is no winning in actuality. All of us die. So I suppose... Going out like this isn't so bad. Picking your own time and place. Good hunting, Gavin. Give him hell. I decked you out with enough freaking missile armaments and shit like that. You should at least be able to dent one of them. Anyways, here we are in our cave. Again, slightly different. There shouldn't be any random battles in here. There's also nothing of interest in here whatsoever. And then we have a save point here, which is our, I'm going to call this an episode, because we're already up to almost 40 minutes. I'm just going to send this one up as a plain old episode. Go ahead and save, and we'll be done. When we get back, we get to finish fleeing for our lives from the Psycho Gundam, which could just step on us. Oh, and hopefully I don't have to do this for one, two, the third time. This would be the third time. So no more four. I don't want to have to record this session again fourth time through. So, folks, until next time, see you later.